This is one of the extra special moments in my 100 Huntley Street adventure. I have the privilege of meeting one of my mentors. Dr. Larry Crabb is a well-known psychologist, conference and seminar speaker, Bible teacher, and popular author. He currently is scholar in residence at Colorado Christian University in Colorado and serves as spiritual director for the American Association of Christian Counselors. Dr. Crabb and his wife Rachel live in the Denver area, but he's going to be right here for the next two weeks of some very special programming. So we're going to take some time to get to know him. Welcome, Dr. Crabb. Great to be with you. First thing I have to tell you is that almost 30 years ago, I prayed, I said, Lord, help me to see what people are not saying. Mm -hmm. And into my life very quickly in a course at Briarcrest Bible College, uh -huh. Biblical Counseling in the Church, came Understanding People. Uh -huh. And right on the heels of that, your book, Inside Out. This was God's answer to my prayer. <laughs> the wonderful insights that would be part of really understanding what makes us tick. Mm -hmm. And this was early in the journey for you. Early in the journey. It's been a long journey and that was probably midway, maybe a little bit before. Mm -hmm. um, the Marriage Builder, I, let's just show some of the others that might be familiar to you. Uh, a blueprint for couples and counselors. Uh, I think the book I don't have here, Connecting, mm. signals a major paradigm shift that created a ripple in counseling circles, uh, Bible colleges, seminaries. Everybody heard that something had happened to Larry Crabb. Hmm. What happened? A lot of things have happened to Larry Crabb across a long journey. You mentioned the marriage builder, for example. That came out of a, a real crisis in my own marriage. Um, I wrote that book shortly after my wife and I had hit a real wall in our marriage. We met when we were 10. We had our first date at age 12. We got married at 21. You had a date at 12? We had a date at 12. Well, oh we shared a hymn book in a youth program. That was our date. <laughs> <laughs> her maiden name was Rachel Joy Lankford. Her married name is Rachel Lankford Crabs. When she married me, I took the joy out of her life and made her a crab. Oh dear. Are, <laughs> are you really blaming yourself? <laughs> well, that, that's not total truth. No. But it, uh, we're doing fine with 43 years. But that book came out of a personal, uh, personal struggle in our marriage, as most of my books have. And there are a lot of things in your life that, uh, well, for example, my sister-in-law came here today specifically to meet you personally because when she took the Grief Share yeah, program yeah, that yeah. some of our viewers will be familiar with, you were one of many professional counselors who spoke into yes. that journey. And as she was being teased that you were her boyfriend because <laughs> you made the biggest impact uh, in her recovery after her husband's death at 57. I didn't know that you lost a brother uh, in a plane crash. In a plane crash, he was flying standby, the last one to get on. He was a psychologist as well. From Denver to Colorado Springs, a plane crashed and all 24, three crew and 21 passengers were killed that day. And I think that was the beginning of the shift that you refer to. Um, when, I, when I lost my brother, that was the first obvious heart-wrenching tragedy of, of my life of that proportion and to watch my parents bury their older son. How old was he? He was 51. And it was um, obviously incredibly painful and difficult. And I recall about three or four weeks perhaps after the memorial services and after all the things that happened after a terrible death like that, I remember saying to my wife one night at midnight, um, there are tears I have not yet shed and I don't know what they are. And I got up to wow. in the middle of the night and went into my room and um, got my Bible out looking for answers and I just couldn't find them. And I got so, so angry. And then the anger gave way to tears. And I just fell on the floor and sobbed for probably half an hour. And I prayed a prayer that was pivotal. And pivotal in, I think, my shift from where I've been to where I am now. And the prayer was very simply put, but it came out of my soul. The prayer was, Lord, I know you're all that I have, but I don't know you well enough for you to be all that I need. And let me find you. That led to the book Finding God. A couple of years later, it led to the book Connecting, which was kind of my paradigm shift, if you will, where I think I came to the conclusion, not, I used the wrong word there, I, I know I came to the conclusion, that um, psychology has its place, counseling has its place, but when you get down to the core issues in the human life, the only answer is Jesus. The only answer is God. 
And I remember thinking, what, what does that mean? It also occurred to me when I, during that time that, <clears throat> that I think I went into psychology because I, as a, even as a kid, as a teenager, as a young adult, I was struggling with all sorts of things that my understanding of Christianity wasn't speaking to. And so I chose psychology and put Christianity to the side, if you will. Mm -hmm. And then because I you thought to, you'd find the answers there. I hadn't found street. them in Christianity to my knowledge at that point. Mm. So I looked to psychology for all the answers that my own personal struggles and all the rest of it were involved with. And, um, and after my brother's death and some other things, after a struggle with cancer that I had about yeah. 12, 13 years ago, um, I've, I've reached the conclusion that beneath all of the things we call psychological problems, there ultimately is a spiritual struggle. There ultimately is a struggle to know what the word love means. Do I, do I belong to anybody? Is anybody on the throne of my life? Good old phrase. Um, is, is there any meaning to all the bad things that happen? Is there any point to everything? And those are the things that I spent 10 years in private practice as a clinical psychologist. And looking back on it, I realized that those were the kinds of issues that we were talking about. It wasn't just behavior therapy techniques or cognitive behavior therapy or psychodynamic therapy or all the various therapies that psychologists have. We were dealing with, with huge questions in the human soul and the human spirit and the human psyche that as a psychologist, I didn't, I didn't have answers for. And that made me think, well, wait a minute, I'm also a Christian. And then I thought, there maybe, is God. maybe I better drop the <laughs> thought of being also a Christian and by the way, there's God and see what on earth this all means. What is the gospel? It, I, I feel I'm 65 years old and I'm kind of tingle as I say this next sentence that occurs to me. I think I'm just beginning to understand the gospel. And I think I'm just beginning to realize that there's something about the reality of God and all the things that churches teach that speak into the depths of the human soul, mine included, and people that I'm working with included. Well, obviously, what you've discovered and the change that has resulted is highly respected because mm -hmm. you're spiritual director for the American Association of Christian Counselors. Yeah. Uh, you're the man at the top. Well, uh, you're inspiring so many others to take this journey. How, how long was it from, from, from hitting the wall and, and finding your own emptiness to getting the answers that would lead to some pretty groundbreaking <laughs> Myra, the journey continues. I'm not sure if I've gotten the answers. I still see myself as a stumbling pilgrim. I still see myself as a seeker. I still see myself as somebody who um, doesn't yet know the way I one day will. I have.